Alright, so now in this video we have this circuitry here which is in a way measuring how hot this resistor is getting. I'm going to turn up the voltage so it warms up a little bit more and uh, it should go into alarm when the resistor gets too hot. So it looks like we're about earlier I was getting 400 degrees I think it cooled off a little bit but uh, looks like we're in about the 400 volt or uh, 400 degree range right there and this circuitry it has a thermistor here which is uh, setting a voltage and we have a set point where when that voltage rises above our set point we'll get to that later then we will get an audible alarm so I'm going to turn up the wattage even more, try to speed up the uh, process for this demonstration part. So this large resistor, it doesn't uh, change its temperature rapidly. It takes a little while, but uh, hopefully it'll go off any second now. So we can actually measure the, uh, there we go, it just went off. So I'm going to turn the fan on, there we go, the fan cooled it down enough where it's not an alarm anymore. So that's really the demonstration. We will uh, take apart this circuit and build it step by step to understand what each part is doing a little bit better. So now the circuit's been taken apart other than I'm going to leave the jumpers. They help with my spacing while I make uh, the videos. But in any case I accidentally wrote down the wrong wattages. That was actually right. But uh, the thermistor that we were using when I set it up against a the resistor that we just saw there based on the last video I did I found that its resistance got to 4.5 kilo ohms when it was heated to about 2.5 watts the uh, the large resistor which is probably about where you should keep it for a safety reason you can raise it up to a little bit more than 5 watts because it's a 10 watt resistor which should still be safe we're actually going to set this alarm where it's going to go off at uh, about this point in that range hopefully a little bit sooner than that and uh, at uh, 10 watts the thermistor had one kilo ohms of resistance that's when the resistor got really hot I covered that in my last video but in any case I made those changes if you happen to have noticed those numbers earlier so to begin our build we're going to start with the output because the output of the LM393 comparator is up here. Of course the uh, integrated circuit, I did some other videos on it so I'm going to kind of rush through this now, but the uh, output, there's one comparator on each side, we got to power the integrated circuit, so pin number 8 up here, that goes to the positive rail, pin number 4 down here goes to the negative rail, so we got a comparator there and a comparator there. We have the output at top, the inverting pin, right below it, and right below the inverting pin is the non-inverting pin and that layout is the same on there but the output is up there so I have a jumper coming up here we're, we're gonna need to power a buzzer the output is not gonna be strong enough to power the uh, buzzer directly I find it does not work very good to have a resistor of uh, really any value in front of the, the buzzer so we're gonna use a transistor to take the signal and then just the signal will turn the transistor on or off like a switch and so I'm going to use the 2N2222 in the TO92 package and so if you have an NPN transistor doesn't matter really what uh, transistor you use we're only going to deal with 24 milliamps that's all the current the buzzer will let through when you apply 5 volts directly across it but uh, pin layout may be different but uh, if it starts with 2N and it's an NPN bipolar junction transistor you can pretty much count on the left pin being the emitter middle pin the base and then the right pin the collector so we're gonna turn it like this because we have this jumper to indicate where the emitter goes the middle pin is the base that goes to the output of the LM393 and then up here we have straight across from here the orange jumper to the positive rail and we're gonna fill that gap with the buzzer as you can see there so hopefully you can see that pretty good and the buzzer is an active buzzer all you do is put 5 volts across it I also read you can put 3.3 .3 volts across it but uh, I really only deal with 5 volts it is polarized you can see a plus here this sticker 
is not needed, but it helps reduce the volume. It's a really loud buzzer. You can't control the volume in any meaningful way. And uh, there's also a plus on the physical component. So that makes it pretty easy. We will put the plus towards uh, the jumper there. I'm going to zoom in. And uh, this is kind of tricky because you can't really see the pins once you get it close enough to the board to insert it. So we want to make sure we get to, uh, there we go, I turned it a little bit. But make sure we got a connection there on uh, both sides, which we do there. So that's almost it for the output. The LM393 actually does not output a positive signal. For the positive signal, you actually need a resistor. And all we have to do is have enough current for the transistor to turn on or off. And I think a 4.7 kilo ohm resistor will do just fine. When the transistor is not on, that means we have a low output at the LM393. And it's just sinking whatever current we provide right to ground. And so this integrated circuit is really intended for low power uh, power sources and like batteries and stuff and so whenever you can you should work on designing using as little current as possible in pretty much every part of the circuit of course we have a power supply here we don't have to worry about wasted uh, energy too much but uh, it's good to just keep in mind this is intended for low power so might as well keep everything as low power as possible when you design that so we come to the positive rail so that's it for the output let's get to one of the inputs so the inputs we got the non-inverting and the inverting they're voltage dividers that's how this works it senses the difference in voltages here and when one is higher or lower than the other ones that changes the output and so we're going to use a voltage divider to set the voltage to make everything easy on the negative side we're going to use the same value resistance and that way since I know the range of uh, resistances of the uh, thermistor that I'm using because I tested that in another video I found uh, at uh, 2.5 watts so that's with 5 volts across the 10 ohm resistor we had about uh, 4.5 kilo ohms of resistance at the thermistor and then when I put 7.5 volts across the big resistor which is 5.6 watts plus a little bit more is about 2 kilo ohms and so so I'm just gonna set the resistance a little bit higher than that by putting a 3 kilo ohm resistor on the inverting voltage divider so let's zoom in and uh, it's just the voltage divider going to the pin pretty easy it's getting a little cramped here so I got a jumper there for the non inverting pin which we'll come to later but in uh, any case, 3 kilo ohm resistor, we're going to set uh, right here. I'll leave a little gap there. So that's going to the positive rail, and then over to the inverting pin. So second pin down. I don't want it to touch that resistor, because I will short it out. But uh, now we've got this resistor. I'm going to squeeze it in, so a negative rail, and then the same row there, non inverting pin. So these two resistors can touch each other. And uh, we don't want these two leads to touch each other, but these two can because they're going into the same slot in the board anyways. And so we have a set voltage right there. And I think with the 5 volt power supply, that'll be practically spot on 3.6 volts. And now for the non-inverting input. So we have a negative temperature coefficient right here, thermistor, which means as this thermistor warms up, its resistance goes down as we saw up there earlier and we're going to use the same negative side resistor there so let's uh, zoom in and just realize this goes to pin number three the uh, inverting pin but let's zoom in for a better view and so this is the uh, trickiest component here because I have to angle it to where it's going to reach the resistor and the leads are thin and uh, it's actually kind of a pain to get it into the board so let's see how we do so putting it in the positive rail there and uh, that was probably the hardest part right there and then this one I'm gonna leave a space for the other resistor right there but uh, 
as you can see we got a jumper here that goes to pin number three second to the bottom pin I think we got a good enough connection there and the little ball here is off to the side so I can set the resistor right up against it so it will always be in contact with the resistor and in a practical circuit I would find a way to affix it to the resistor but this is just a prototype circuit so now again we're using a 7.5 kilo ohm 7500 ohm resistor on the negative side to form a voltage divider and uh, so we'll put that in that slot right there that we left in the middle there and then that to the negative there so we got a voltage that's varying it's not going to be the same voltage it will vary based on how warm the resistor is but it's going to start off lower than the voltage we set there as the heat rises the voltage is going to rise at this point because we'll have less resistance on the positive side of this voltage divider and uh, so once this voltage rises to that voltage and then above that voltage then the output will change on the comparator because it compares the two voltages and uh, when this pin is higher than that pin it allows a high output and then finally we're going to add a 10 watt resistor so that's this large cement one and we're going to set it next to the thermistor but it is not electrically connected at all in fact I'm going to use a completely different power supply voltage that I can vary so I'm just going to kind of move this over and then slide it down oh by the way they really nicely label this 10 watt 10 ohm and then J uh, I'm not sure what exactly that means but it has some specific property that they added a J in there so you have to check the data sheet for that but in any case just placing it in two blank rows and uh, push it up to the thermistor let's move this one out of the way so that uh, we should have it in contact so just be aware of that whatever results we get from that it's just from the thermistor just resting on the side of the resistor like that of course for when you need more accurate measurements you would make a better connection but in case there we go we just got it to two rows I have a bench power supply and it has alligator clips on the uh, as probes basically on both sides and uh, so we can just connect them directly to the leads these are pretty heavy duty leads on these resistors they do still fit in the breadboard though but uh, you can clamp stuff to them pretty nicely and that's really it for the circuit other than testing it out so now as I said before this circuit relies on voltages so right now this power supply is off and then uh, that power supply is off as you can see and I haven't changed anything other than I added this jumper for an easy spot to get to the uh, negative rail and uh, so I don't accidentally short something out when I try to get measurements there but now I got that power on so I got power to the integrated circuit and the buzzer is not going so let's uh, try to measure pin number two see if we can find a good way to do that and uh, so there as I said before pin number two the uh, inverting pin we set to about 3.6 volts and so now pin number three let's see if I can carefully get there without shorting anything out there you go now you can see that is at two volts right now so I'm gonna turn on the bench power supply and set it up to uh, I'm gonna set it to 10 volts which is 10 watts because this resistor takes a while to heat up and I kind of want to speed things up and so let's see if I can get pin 3 again there we go now you can see that the voltage is rising rapidly so this is the non inverting pin so right now the non inverting pin has a lower voltage than the inverting pin and so when it's lower than the non inverting pin then the output is low so that's an easy way to remember it and uh, let's go back to pin number two look at that again hopefully not short anything out there you can see it's uh, 3.6 volts so we set that the uh, the other pin is not set it's changing it's rising it's rising pretty rapidly and uh, so let's look at the voltage across here as I said before 
I set it to about 10 volts and uh, looks like it's a little lower than what my power supply says but this is heating up rapidly and we might even have time for a thermal view so uh, I should technically probably just cut and come back later but in any case there it is and I find I probably get the most accurate temperature if I go up about that high up there but it's heating up so in any case I think we're about the point where it's going to go into alarm probably so let's come back to this and uh, look at it there we go yep it was about it's almost at that 3.6 volts there we go and there we go it's going into alarm so I'm going to turn the fan on there we go fan on to cool it down and I'm turning the voltage down so we tested it there so at uh, first I thought this was higher than about uh, 5 watts but I made a little goof and uh, so we're actually going into an alarm when the resistor is heating up to fairly close to 5 watts which may be what you want if, if that's the case this setup would work alright but uh, any case this is the most complex circuit I've done so far but really I did voltage divider videos I did uh, I know that fans annoying so I'm gonna turn it off I've done voltage divider videos the uh, thermistor for the negative temperature coefficient there's also positive temperature coefficient PTC's where they get uh, a higher resistance as they warm up I don't have any of those though so uh, probably will never do a video on that I already did a video on the uh, comparator that's all it does it compares the two voltages when the non-inverting has a higher voltage than the inverting we have a high output actually provided by the resistor when it's lower than the inverting input then we have a low output basically we're connecting ground directly to the output I've done a number of transistor videos including as a switch and uh, I did uh, buzzer videos a while ago so it's all just putting together different fragments and uh, they go together really nicely and really easily as you can see here as long as you understand each fragment so uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video